to um, share with you, and Michael brought up a really good point about this. So I'm going to skip some of this other. I just had six or eight questions I wanted to ask you about um, what you were doing. Let me just hit on this. Um, but this is the one in red down here on the bottom. I really want to talk about for your USPs. How can you bundle this service with other inspection offerings? Has anybody thought about that? David or Brandon, have you guys thought about that? What other services could you bundle with your um, with your um, uh, um, your builder's warranty inspection to try to increase the value of what you're offering uh, over your competitors? Yes, we do uh, a free we do a free thermal scan with every ins there you go. inspection, yeah. and you know we also tout the drone inspection. So. Okay. And do you, now, David, would you do the drone inspection for free or would there be a reduced price? Uh, the drone is free with the builder warranty and thermal is free with the builder warranty. So we're offering two things. And if they don't, I've had people say, well, um, you're higher than the competition. And I'm like, well, we can take off one of these services. We can take the drone off if you like, and we'll, we'll, we'll match the, the rate or we'll take the thermal off, whichever one you don't want. So I use it as a negotiation tool as well. Great strategy. Now, I, I know that um, everybody, we could always tell from every development um, radon levels. We, you know, where we were, there was elevated levels of radon, but some neighborhoods really had it back. Hamilton Mills, some of the other ones had, you know, 50% of the clients had elevated radon level. Um, what about What about offering a discounted service and then if they give you the names um, of the individuals that you can work for again, you could you could take the you could rebate them on the price. And rebate is an ugly word sometimes, but you could gift them back the fee from the radon test. So it never really got your builder's warranty fee. They get the radon test for a reduced price, let's say a third less. So let's say it's 150 bucks just for easy math. You give them $25 for everybody they got. So um, if they referred you to three people, you'd rebet, you'd, you would gift them back $75 off the rate on test. You still take the full fee for the builder's warranty. Uh -huh. See what I'm that, saying? Yeah. Right. I, I'm opposed to reducing your fees. You know what I'm saying? I, I right. just, I mean, everybody has to eat and, you know, we, we don't have these things priced down to where it's just, you know, too, too little, you know, I mean, you're pricing the way you need to do to make a profit. And, and I want that. Um, but I just hate these discounts and all. So if we were to do something like that, um, they get a big bonus. They didn't get a rate on tests in the beginning. Um, you already offering uh, extra value in the drone and the infrared. Um, right. So now you're, you're bundling again. And if they had a pool and spa, maybe they didn't get that inspected and maybe you could offer that. So what other services could you offer in bundle? I think that makes your value um, you know, proposition way better than your competitors because they're certainly not thinking about this. Has anybody um, offered to flush the water heater? Do you know at that one year mark, um, mm -hmm. flushing a water heater uh, tank to get the sediment out of it as a service? Does anybody do that? Interesting that you ask that. We got a client that's starting a business to do do those things. He's really focused on tankless water heaters, but um, full fledged water. Anybody else doing it? David, Brandon, you guys doing it? Anybody? Um... No, I would be worried about doing something like that, especially with my inspectors, just because. If you don't do it right, you if there's debris in the water heater, you could you know, you could ruin a faucet that way. Yeah, I mean, there's technical things you got those worked out, but um, I think the thing about it is that um, you know homeowners do it and all this that, and the other. So if you could find a way to safely do it, I think it's another service that you can offer. I mean, to Keith, we said tankless water heaters. I, I said to him, why aren't we doing? you know, water heaters that are standard, standard water heaters, not just tankless, because um, those need it as well. And so few consumers ever do it. I mean, most consumers don't even know they need to do it. Hell, I'm a home inspector and I don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michael, I think that um, if you wasn't gonna admit a way it. to do it, I, I think the fact <laughs> of the matter is that it's a value added service and nobody else is doing it clearly. So I think you should explore it. Right. I, I was doing it for yeah. a little bit and I was doing it like um, like you were talking. Well, I wasn't doing it like you were talking about, but I would. Um, the idea of connecting the. 
uh, flush in the water heater with a with a referral um, sounds like a good tool. So then, um, you know, I offered it as a, I'm going to call it a loss leader. It was you know a, a um, you know if you if you uh, scheduled online, uh, then you would get a you know, a free water, I mean, a, yeah, the water heater flush as a service um, at the time of your warranty inspection, um, you know, that way. But the idea of, you know, using it at the homeowners to be able to get uh, referrals uh, from neighbors. Um, hey, if you, well, yeah, get referrals from neighbors using that. Um, I was comfortable doing it. Um, I was more comfortable doing the tanks than I was the um, tankless. So the tankless in, you know, sort of carrying the equipment and getting them connected uh, in this part of the country, the way that they install the tankless uh, sometimes is uh, impossible to uh, get to the connectors. Um, I, it ends up being one of the things that I write up as a deficient condition is uh, the way that they install them in the box. The uh, service ports uh, are not accessible. Yeah, because that needs to be done, too. I had to, I really, uh, the first tankless water heater we had was our home in Venice. And I was reading an article by a home inspector um, that talked about the need to have that tankless water heater flushed. And I started researching it a bit, and he was exactly correct. And then trying to find a plumber in the community that would do it was really difficult. Um, nobody really wanted to do it. And the guy that we used and had a contract with didn't do it. And we switched to veteran heating and air that did plumbing and we switched our whole account to him. Um, you know, I want somebody who can do everything. I don't want to deal with a bunch of extra people. Um, so I have, I have a question and I just, it just popped in my head. <sighs> Cause it's uh sounds like an annual maintenance inspection. So, you know, basically I mean, that would be a recurring business um, that you could do for every home and you could include that into that. But while you're mailing out your one year builder warranty inspection, maybe include, hey, have you considered an annual maintenance inspection? Um, I don't know. I'm just trying to, and this way, if it hits somebody that wasn't a one year builder warranty, then you weren't wasting your money. Does that make any sense? Sure. And I want to go back to what Michael was saying a minute ago on a loss leader, because what he's really talking about is a retail term that we that we hear quite frequently. But one of the things that Dan Kennedy asked me years ago, and he said, Ken, would you um, sell a service at a loss? And I said, well, Dan, I'm going to have to think about that for a minute, because normally I would not. Um, but I'm not saying, no, I'm, I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. And he said, well, I, I wouldn't sell a service as a loss normally, but when I have a back end, I'm willing to sell a service at a loss. And what Michael just told you was a very valuable story. Okay. He's willing to take a loss on a service because his back end is other services, whether it's a builder's warranty inspection or whatever he has to offer. Okay, so he got his foot in the door. It's called a foot in the door strategy. He got his foot in the door with that loss leader, knowing that his back end was strong enough to recoup that loss with other services. And I think when you start thinking this way, you've really turned into a serious marketer. Okay, because everything is not front end. All right, so you have to start thinking about this or this or this, for instance. And this really drives me to what we've been talking about earlier, and that's our sphere of influences. Okay, and particularly our contractors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the fact of the matter is when you get a client, whether it's a loss leader or a full service uh, or full price service, then what happens, they become your client. And then what happens is you can get them on your newsletter list and you can start continuing to market them and their families and their friends and their acquaintances. But you also have other things to offer that client besides home inspection services. One of the things that uh, uh, Michael might want to offer to his clients that are on his newsletter list, a special offer from his plumber, his, his preferred vendor, um, for a tankless water heater flush, if you don't do that, or flushing the water heater. Or like Gary Sloan, our, our client forever and good friend in Peachtree City, 
he offered um, a, a, their lawn service and their lawn service did one free mowing. Okay, these are offers and goodwill that you can build up with your clients for additional referrals. See what I'm saying? So even if Michael went yeah. in and did something for a lost leader, he didn't get closed anything on the back end. He still got a new client. Okay. And they were so thrilled with what he did. And now he got him in the list. I mean, why should they go to Angie's list when they can go to Michael's list for preferred vendors? Okay. So you really start that whole process. It really, you're looking at the, the home inspector ecosystem now, not just the home inspector. Okay, so I, I really I really like yeah. that. And that was a very valuable point I want you guys to understand. So what other services could you offer that might be at a loss leader or break even that you could start that process with? So because right now, I mean, revenue squeezed for everybody. I mean, I don't know about you, but gas prices aren't going down. You know, nothing's going down here in Lady Lake, Florida. So we're continuing to have to think through this. Okay. Michael, thanks for sharing that because yeah. that was a great. Yeah, that's one thing that I think we could probably do better. Um, yeah, we could do that better too. Is incorporating kind of our our trusted vendors into that as well, and and you know talk to them about you know the you know what kind of promos they want to want us to you know offer to those those one year warranty clients as well, and, and additional value too. So let's think about this. Hang on, Beth, for a second. Let's think about this on your bundle. Okay, so here's what happens is you have a franchise or a, or a housekeeping company that's really good that you like and is on your preferred vendor list. How about, um, oh, by the way, as part of our bundle, um, we have one of our preferred vendors that offers a free cleaning service. Okay, you might think, well, that's out of the blue. Mm -hmm. But guess what happens? Who's, gonna, who's not going to take a free cleaning service? Or how about mowing your lawn for free once? Sure. Uh, or, mm -hmm. or shrub trimming or, you know, power washing or whatever it happens to be, because you know what happens is when your preferred That's vendor control. goes out there, yeah, then what happens is you have helped them, they in turn help you. Okay, they continue to make offers, they build a client list, they market, they do the same thing if they're smart like you do. Okay, but now you've, you've controlled the whole thing and they're getting extra value even though you didn't have to provide it. OK, which means you're the primary person. I mean, I always go back to this. If you have, let's just say eczema. OK, and you live in California. OK, and I see here in Lady Lake an article about eczema, a homo homeopathic res uh, uh, you know, treatment for eczema that works. So I send my friend that article. I cut it out of the newspaper. Let's say I'm old school. I cut it out of the newspaper and send it to him with a letter and say, listen, I know you've suffered with eczema old buddy, and here's what happened. I saw this homeopathic re uh, remedy, and boom, I thought you might be able to get some benefit from it. Hope everything's going well. Okay, who gets credit for that? The author of the article or me for sending it to my buddy? Okay, of course it's me. All right, so this mm -hmm. is the position I want you to put yourself in. Um, the fact of the matter is you've recommended somebody else's service and they do a good job. You get the halo effect from it. Okay. They, they think of you, wow, man, Ken gave me that landscaper for a free trial. And you know, he did such a good job. I'm going to hire that guy. I'm sick of on that lawn. Or wow, my house has never looked more sparkling clean. I'm going to get that lady at least once a month or that company at least once a month. See what I'm saying? So even if yeah. Michael took on a client at a loss for a lost leader or break even, now you've got a client that you're marketing for other products and services, but not just them, their spheres of influence. Yeah. Then we have to start thinking way bigger, way bigger, you know, but we just always were lazy and dependent on real estate agent referrals with Sitzer Burnett. That is not going to be our option. That path is going away. Whether it's going away in your neighborhood today or not, I don't know. But the fact of the matter is it's going away. Okay, it only came in August 17th, the federal rules. Okay, so we have to replace those leads that we would get from buyer's agents that are no longer going to be there with strategies. And this is why we need to have these bigger discussions. Yeah. Okay. I, just my thoughts on a guy might be totally wrong, but I'm telling you, it worked for me like a champion. And you know, we'd be doing 1.75 million a year in home inspections. So it worked for us. I promise you it'll work for you too. 
So hey, uh, Ken, I've got to I've got to dip out, and so then okay. I appreciate the email uh, for the open mic night and the invite to that, and uh, it was uh, good to be on here, and um, look forward to seeing uh, the progress on uh, trying to get hold of the list again. Sure, Michael, come on back anytime because it's open. This this is a platform for you guys. Sounds great. I appreciate it. It was uh, Thanks, good talking. Good to see you, see you sure. again. Goodbye. Good All right. You. Um, real quickly before we move on, um, like with our newsletter program where we send to the client, our biggest thing we've been focusing on, and this tonight's what has made me think of this, has mainly been stay in touch with them so that when they need a you know a home inspection or know of someone who you know does, they're going to recommend the client. But look at look at that audience you have that you can offer these additional services to. And then if they don't need it, then they know somebody who does. So now we've moved beyond just, you know, the referral to being able to actually get them to do services with us again or with you, mm -hmm. with the client. Yeah, there's no question that that list is powerful, but without a preferred vendors list and without that program going, it's difficult to make that happen. And that's why, we when we started this conversation with open mic uh weeks and weeks ago we started off with um citra Burnett judgment as taking away uh, buyer's agents and so let's say whether 40 percent of them go away in your neighborhood or 60 or 100 percent those leads that they gave us in the past that was easy money okay and yeah. now we're gonna have to work harder for our money and we're, we're up as home inspectors we're up against a lot of obstacles higher interest rates inventory shortages uncertain political future I mean, there's a lot of things facing you guys that that are extremely difficult. Yeah. And so our goal is to try to give you new ideas and spark some some, you know, uh, ideas of your own that you think maybe I can do it and then share with everyone else on the on the call.